One thing that might be useful when you try to do this at home, you saw the process that we did here. You, we got the driver, we plugged it in and all of that. And for some of you, I'd showed this, but not for everyone. So if you're trying to do this at home, what might be useful on a Windows computer, if you uh, right-click Computer and then select Properties, then you can see the Device Manager. Device Manager lists all the things that are plugged in, devices. And so ideally, there's nothing with a little warning sign on mine, I'm not worried about that, but if yours was some Samsung device and you plugged it in and it said device question mark, your device isn't working. But what you should be looking for is that the device manager says something like Android device and then your particular device plugged in. So again, you can confirm that with right-click computer and then device manager. So if it says something ADB interface, I believe it stands for Android uh, debug bridge, I think, Android debug bridge, so or Android device bridge, one of those. So that means your device is bridged, it can connect with your computer and transfer the app. If, if you don't see something like that, if I see for a few people it says portable device, and it says the name of their device, that probably is not the right uh, setting that you need. You need it to say something about ADB some in some section about Android. To fully confirm that it works, then in Visual Studio you, you run it. And what seemed to help for a lot of people is to switch it over to the simulator first and then switch it back to the device. Sometimes it, it helps to uh, unplug it completely and switch to simulator, then replug it, and then switch to device. Just some weird dance. Everyone's got some weird way to, to do it, perhaps. But when once you know what you need to do on your device on our computer, then when it works there, you just run it, and it'll eventually pop up. So when you see that little Cordova mascot pop up there, it's all worth it, because then now you're a real app developer. So raise your hand. How many of you got a result on the device? Okay, cool. Now take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You are a web developer and an app developer. <laughs> Once you get 80 more hours, yes. So if you see a result, obviously on mine it's going to take a while. We don't have to wait for it. But that's why you need to do this the first time you come in. And I'll give us in the beginning, you know, 15 or 20 minutes or whatever to set yourself up. And you'll see that it'll go a lot faster subsequent times. And we, you're going to need to do this every time starting on Tuesday from the rest to the rest of the semester so that your, uh, so that your app runs on a real device then we will be opening a real project as the days go on to, um, to work on. So before we take our little break, what I'd like to do is, here's your practice. We did it together, but here's your practice before the break. Last time, we went over to the uh, Cordova documentation, and we found the documentation to make pop-ups. In that pop-ups documentation, there was also another method to make a sound, a beep, like a warning notification. Here's your challenge before the break. Go back to the documentation and see if you can use the code to make your device play a sound. The hint is that it's in the dialogues, in the dialogues documentation. Remember, we made a pop-up that said, you're a winner, or whatever it said, a little pop-up. It's in that same documentation. So try that. Make it pop up. Make it make a beep. According to the Apache documentation, the Cordova documentation, see if you can get that to work. If you do, take a break.